Hello everyone, this is Gary Pruitt, the Security and Compliance Practice Lead here at Nimble. And in this series of videos, I'm here to demo some of the functionality of SAP's Access Control. Now, SAP Access Control is a great product for assessing separation of duties risk and for managing and automating security changes to users and to roles, but it often helps to visualize what these processes look like in order for you to be able to apply them within your organization and to get a sense for yourself how your organization could benefit from a lot of the features of SAP's Access Control product. And that's the goal of these videos. I want to be able to give you a sense for how this functionality might be applied to your specific instance. By the way, uh, I know that the SAP marketing department has made several careers out of rebranding. So when I'm <laughs> saying uh, Access Control, and if you're used to using something like GRC or Versa, then please feel free to think GRC or Versa in your mind. I'm going to try to stick with the 10.1 terminology today. Now let's go ahead and start with the Access Request Management Module, End User Provisioning. And the goal of this module is to be able to allow organizations to quickly make decisions and provision access to end users while ensuring that compliance mandates are followed. Now in this scenario, we'll be throwing out a lot of names. Uh, basically there's three that I want you to keep in mind to keep, and to keep it separate. I've got them here on the slide. We've got a requester, her name is Brenda. She's going to be requesting access for a set of requestees and we're going to pick on Julie Pettit today and once that request is submitted it's going to trigger a workflow that uh, sends an email over to James Wentworth to basically asking him to make a decision on that access. Here's a simplified workflow of what we're going to step through today. Now there are additional steps that are commonly implemented. Again the separation duty check is a big one so if there is a separation duties risk that is identified during the course of provisioning there's also typically another uh, decision point to escalate that to a risk owner and they can make that decision as to whether or not that should be lived because that's a risk that the organization can live with or if that should not be allowed or if a mitigating control should be implemented etc but for the purposes of today's demo we're going to look at a streamlined workflow and again those in light green are the automate are the uh, manual steps, those in dark green are automated steps that are auto automatically going to be handled. And hopefully we can do this without having a security individual log into the organization to provision the access. Now I'll go ahead and pull up my slide here. I've got, I'm going to start this whole process off by requesting the access and Brenda's going to go ahead and sign in and, and start that process. Now there's a variety of ways she can do this. I'm going to use the end user launch pad. This is a ICF service that you can activate and provision to your end users to allow them to uh, basically it's a simple user, user interface to allow them to do things like requests, access, do password changes, etc. Now this interface is authenticated to with username only and so technically I could come in here and spoof an access request from another user. The point is I can't really change any system data without approval and even if that system data is changed it's going to be only accessible via the, the requester or the, the requestee in this case. I can't, you know, use, exploit any weaknesses here to, to grant myself firefighter access behind the scenes. So we're going to go ahead and sign on as Brenda. Now I've got a whole set of uh, options here to provision access. I also have some other common tasks that are around user end user maintenance, like if I want to do a name change, if I want to uh, re look at my uh, status of some of the requests that I've submitted or if I want to reset my password here uh, I can do all these things uh, via these links but we're going to go ahead and focus on access request creation. There's a variety of ways to accomplish this but all of these are really designed to help bridge that gap between what the user needs and the business language that the users use and the technical details behind the scenes, the technical role names, the, the composites and symbols and authorization objects, all that stuff that happens behind the scenes. We want to be able to bridge that gap and get the security team and the end users on the same page, so to speak. There are a variety of ways to make this uh, easier for end users. The common one is model user, so I want to you know, set up access for a new user like someone else, uh, very commonly used. We're going to go ahead and use a template-based request today. So I'm going to click on that link. And here are a couple of templates that I have available to me. One is uh, this template for ESS users, that's employee self-service. So I have a lot of users in my organization. The only functionality they need in SAP is to be able to 
sign off and approve their timesheets or enter vacation requests, that type of thing. So I can go ahead and request this. I can also request this for someone else. I'm going to go ahead and request this for uh, again, Julie Pettit. Oops, I need a P. And you can see that Julie Pettit here has, um, she's uh, all her user details are populated here. I've got my email address in here to uh, so I can get the workflow notifications just to, to, to show those to you guys. Um, so I'll go ahead and I've got all my the details I need for this step again it's a wizard interface so it's it's a next 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 type of interface I basically have four steps to this. I'll go ahead and click next and here you can see the technical role names that again they don't really need to know that they are requesting access to ZFH underscore or SAP underscore employee underscore whatever they just know that they're at requesting ESS access and I'll go ahead and they do need to enter a, a reason why so needed for timesheet entry we'll go ahead and put that in as the reason which makes sense we'll click next we got one more review page to kind of review my request I got one more chance to change things if I need to but I can go ahead and submit that request right here and once I click submit that'll trigger a workflow that will go ahead and, and identify who are my role owners that the request should be routed to I could be requesting multiple roles I could have multiple Role, multiple role owners involved. In this particular case though I've only got one role owner that matters that, that's getting the request. So I'll go ahead and actually I'm going to go to my Outlook inbox here and I've got these are, uh, eh, these are, no those are old. A couple of new notifications here. I've got a uh, notification this has gone to Julie herself that says hey your request is underway. I've also got one, and this has gone to James Wentworth, the approver. He's got a uh, notification that says, hey, you've got a new request. You need to go ahead and approve it. Um, there's a variety of ways that he can do that. One, he could go ahead and authenticate via his uh, NetWeaver business client. He can just sign into the GUI, navigate to his inbox, and go from there. He can also click on this link, and we'll go ahead and, and do that here. Um, so he's going in, and this is you know takes him right to the request. He's got a variety of, of options to to he can either go ahead and approve it here by clicking on submit or reject, or we can place it on hold if he wants. He can drill into the details of the request to kind of get better, give him the ability to make those decisions or get the data he needs to make an intelligent decision around a, a yes, no, or hold uh, action here. In this particular case, though. I mentioned we had Fiori installed in the lab. I'm going to go ahead and, and just demo what I can go ahead and approve it just by clicking submit here, but I'm going to demo what this looks like in Fiori. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that interface and go ahead and authenticate to the Fiori Launchpad. And I'm going to go ahead and try to mimic a, the form factor of a, of a mobile device, a tablet, or a mobile phone. Uh, in this particular case, uh, I've got several apps that are in this user's launchpad. This is James Wentworth who signed in again. And he can do a variety of things. He can check his request statuses if he wants to. He can look at, uh, he can request access for himself. But in this particular case, he's got this request that's waiting for approval here for, for Julie. So we're going to go ahead and fire up that application. And again, the goal of the Fiori applications is to simplify the amount of decision making, and get, but get, simplify the amount of decisions that have to be made on the device. Again, you have a limited amount of screen space that you're dealing with, but still give them access to drill into the data to, in order to make an intelligent decision. So here we can see um, that this user has these roles. This is the, the role descriptions instead of the technical role names. I can drill into access risks. There's none triggered here. Um, I can see what T codes are in those roles by looking at the actions. I can, I can drill into some other data here. Basically, I, I have a lot of information even in this mobile interface that allows me to make a decision on whether I should just submit it or, or put this request on hold. I'm going to go ahead and submit it. Looks looks good. We have a lot of ESS users. Access, I'm going to go ahead and put a reason this is also required. I'm going to go ahead and say access approved. I'll go ahead and click OK here. And that's going to trigger that last step of the workflow. So it says it's going it's been approved. And once that's batched through, uh, batch jobs can basically run on a minute cycle here in the demo environment. I, go ahead, I can go ahead and go to my work inbox and see that, hey, your access has been approved. 
And then I can even go into my ECC environment and I've got um, Julie pulled up here and you can see that she's got this access, doesn't have any expiration here, basically is, a, is now provisioned directly in, in the environment. The next time she signs in, she's going to have ESS access provisioned. And the great thing about this whole process is this end-to-end -end process was completed without the security team having to sign into SAP at all. And they didn't need to track down approvals. They didn't need to document an incident. All that stuff is handled automatically behind the scenes. And that concludes our demo on automated access request management.